Hey, good morning, everyone. Or afternoon, maybe. I'm not sure where everybody is. I want to thank everybody for being here. Appreciate it. I know it's midday. So, so traders that can uh, be uh, in your trading room or, you know, at your desk during the day or maybe maybe not at your desk, but you have that ability and then you can go play golf or fish or whatever you do, go race cars, horses, things like that. Welcome to a trader's life. That's wonderful. So, let's see. I saw somebody ask here... Um, Thanks. Hey, Malcolm, how are you? Where's Rick broadcasting from? Um, I have a dedicated office in my house that I uh, trade from. The beauty of stock trading. Beauty of stock trading. Hello, Lee. Glad to have you here. <clears throat> okay, so um, here, a couple things I want to make sure I cover real quick uh, today. Uh, today, today, today. Um, I closed that Intel. We were in some Intel, and I closed that out for a little bit of a profit. Hey, look, I think Intel still goes higher. Um, I'm just being somewhat uh, very, very cautious right now. Pretty quick on the profit trigger, uh, going into the election and uh, just trying to lighten things up. Uh, I think it's uh, craziness, honestly. Uh, to be trading too heavy into the election. Uh, if you look at the SPY here, we are horribly, horribly overbought. Um, the T2122 four-week new high-low ratio, uh, we were up there very, very high, and you can see we've pulled back a little bit, uh, but I still think we're in that that uh, overbought area and uh, very, very dangerous to be trading right now. Um, for those that were here last week, see PAYX, um, if you were here last week, you might remember that, um, I bought this PAYX right here. Now, when I bought it, the candle looked much, much better, but that the market took a bit of a, uh, a header, uh, and then pull this PAYX down. I held it and I ended up closing it uh, yesterday. Yeah, I closed it yesterday for a nice little base hit uh, profit. So uh, sure love those charts that's in the trap area, I really do. Uh, let me send a note to Ed here. All good, there we go. <clears throat> so, all right, so, um, what, I, what I'm hoping for today is you guys have a few questions um, about, well, just about anything, I guess. And uh, I'll be talking about a few charts and things like that, and we'll see what we can do today. Uh, do keep in mind that this is during the day. This is live trading. You're, everything here is live, so uh, I may <clears throat> put on a trade. I will certainly share that with you. Uh, I'm not going to be selling anything right now, <clears throat> pretty sure. Um, but uh, I certainly may look to buy something, and I'll go over a couple of them that I'm looking at to buy. Mike, was my PAYX trade a play on earnings? No, it was not. Nope. Um, I rarely PAYX. Here we go. I don't do trades, uh, plays on earnings. Um, I would prefer never to trade through earnings. That That is a losing proposition, if you ask me. Um, but other folks may just make a killing overall on earnings. I don't. Um, no, it was alert last Tuesday. It came up on the uh, scanner here. Uh, this is three of about 25, 26 windows I have up. And uh, it just alerted. I bought it here, and like I say, at the end of the day, it just took a nosedive. I kept it because it was still a 3 8 trap, and I just closed it to make some profits there. That's all. But uh, no, it had nothing to do with earnings. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, one chart, <clears throat> excuse me, one chart uh, I'm looking at is Nuance. Um, 
I'm an inu. Yeah, here we are. Nuance. Um, this right here, what this represents is I, I wasn't able to do one this past Saturday. Um, but in previous Saturdays, and this is one of them, I did. Uh, I do um, early in the morning. I, I'll put out um, charts, you know, to check out for the weekend. Um, charts to ponder, I think is what I call it. And uh, Nuance worked out very well. And I'm actually thinking about buying it up here uh, looking for a breakout. So that's one I'm watching. And MVIS also has possibilities uh, of a buy. Here we've, we've rallied up and we've pulled back and putting in a pretty decent candle here today. So if you're looking for a chart, say under five bucks, that might be uh, a chart that, um, that might, might get somebody a little excited here. Let's see a few of them that's coming up on the scanner now, like SE. Here's here's uh, the scanner window, and I see SE here, um, where we're inside the trap, uh, up and back. So I'm, that's one I'm going to consider. But some of these I won't even look at toward the end of the day. Stein, uh, maybe a buy right now. STN. Whoops, that's yeah. STNE. Um, that may be a buy inside this trap area now. So <clears throat> anyway, we'll we'll take a look at some of those here. Uh, anyone have any questions on any charts? Any questions on any charts? Also, anybody following Roku? Did you take a look at Roku, what it's doing? Um, here we've had a nice rally. We pull back in the trap and now we're moving up on Roku. Hello, Lee. ASM. That's a nice chart. That's an excellent looking chart. Um, plenty of volume. Yeah, plenty of volume. Um, that is a very, very nice chart. Let's take a look at, let's add a few things to it here. Um, my, my only, if, if I had a problem with it, I, I would I would say that 50, being under the 50 period might be a problem, but I don't have a problem with that. Uh, let's go over to a naked chart, and here's what I'm seeing in this. Very nice chart, by the way. Excellent. Uh, we've broken out of our downtrend. We've got we've got a little uptrend that's starting to be created here, and I man I think that is just sweet as can be. Uh, I'm going to write that down. Thank you. ASM. This wouldn't normally come up for me. Uh, pretty sure. Yeah. This this would not come up for me. Um, for one, I, I don't look at trading dollar stocks. Um, the, the only thing I trade are stocks that the, you have, they have to be either in the S&P 500 or in the COBE 400 list, top 400, and I combine those two two, two uh, lists together, and you get about I don't know 840 stocks. Um, this would never be in there. Well, certainly not in there now, but um, yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. But what a nice, nice looking um, chart there. Way to go. Um, is it Shay? Shay? Uh, let's see. Do you close price at high price for three-day moving average? Do you use close price or high? I see what you're saying. Sorry about that. Um, I use the high. I use the high. Um, you see right here. So I use the exponential high. And the reason I do that is I want more to pick from. And I want to make the ultimate choice. And sometimes you have to have more charts to look at. So uh, I would rather do it that way. Now, you can see that if I set this on close or last, see how it drops it down. And it might not pick some charts up. Might not pick some charts up. And I would rather that it picked them up. So I, I like to use the high. But that's just me. You know, if you used the um, close, I think that would be perfectly fine. 
everyone has their little little uh, druthers there. So Al, you're looking at CZR. Let me ask you this: Are you long CZR now, or are you looking to get into it? Uh, yes. <laughs> It's kind of a trick question. Long now or looking to get into it? <laughs> You're making me work for this, Al. You really are. Are you long now or are you looking to get into it? So type in long now or looking to get into it. Okay, well, let's move on. Um, I tried there, sport. I think we looked at this SE a little bit earlier, and if I see SE start to break out, then uh, I'm likely to be long some SE. And I see McDonald's is breaking out now, and this was on our trade idea list today, um, and I'm looking for that breakout. Right now, I would have to say McDonald's uh, is a buy here. Now. It might be worth waiting to the end of the day just to make sure it closes up above that line right there, above that 227.35 area. Uh, that would be a benefit, I think. Keep in mind that you never, ever, 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 ever have to be in a hurry. The, the, the answer to trading is not, oh, McDonald's is a buy now. Hurry up and get in it. You know, that's you never, ever, ever, ever have to do that. And uh, so that's why I'm not concerned about waiting to the end of the day or even waiting for a couple of days to see if it moves sideways or not. So, <clears throat> uh, Dan, let's see, Coke. Let's see, thoughts on Coke. It looked good yesterday on the video uh, from AM, yes, uh, but has pulled uh, back today. Yes, I'm currently long Coke. I bought Coke yesterday, and I, uh, I, I set it up so that I had plenty room to add to Coke. So I'm going to be adding to Coke uh, when Coke starts to show me that buyers are moving in. Um, when I see buyers moving in, uh, I get asked this a lot on uh, YouTube or uh, Twitter. I get asked this quite often. What does it mean when buyers are stepping in? Well, I want to see the buyers moving in. I'm looking at a, th a three bar chart right now. And we've got the uh, first bar today right here on a three bar chart. And here's the second bar. So what I'm going to wait for is for that second bar to finish. And then if I see trading over this afternoon late, if I see trading over that second bar, then I may look to buy it. I really, 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 really want to emphasize this, um, that I do, unless you're a day trader, a scalper, uh, I do not believe anyone ever has to be um, jumping into a stock early, not ever. So I'm looking at this daily chart, and there's just no way in the world I see buyers coming in here. Now, if that wick was up higher, you know, we might we would look at that. But then if you look at the three-bar chart, or if you looked at a 15-minute chart, you would show more of a move in the 15-minute chart. And, and the three-bar chart would show a breakout candle uh, or a, high, a higher bullish candle. So uh, with Coke... Like I say, I'm long Coke. Uh, I plan to stay, well, darn it, Rick. There we go. I plan to stay long Coke unless it just does something horrible, which I don't think it has yet. Um, right now, it's in prime territory to be bought when we see those buyers. And it could be tomorrow or the next day. You know, we could have to wait till, um, let's just say that, okay, it stops right there, does whatever it wants today, and then tomorrow something like that happens, that might be a reason to buy it. Also, the following day, if we start showing trading over the first green day, that would be a good sign that buyers are stepping in, and that's where I may start to add to it. So the reason 
the reason that I really, I, I don't chase dark candles or red candles like this to the downside. I don't want to add to it because how do we know it's not going to continue down? Um, and we don't know that. So that's why I want to see the bulls coming in. Well, for somebody that is in a hurry to buy and you just feel like, well, I've got to buy it down there because, well, you just have to buy it low. I disagree with that. Let's stop for a second and quit worrying about the entry and let's look and see what Coke can do for us. The first thing I want to point out is that Coke is trending up. Yes, it is. Uh, is it having pullbacks? Of course it is. All stocks do that. So let's see what Coke can do for us. Once we break out, and by the way, I'm not concerned about this at all. If I was concerned about this, I never would have bought it. So what I'm looking for is Coke to move up. Now, where can Coke go? So let's come over here, and I'm looking over here now. And, well, I kind of think Coke can move up maybe 56, and then uh, maybe attack that 59 area. So we're already long, so we're looking at uh, just under 10% uh, and what about 13, about 16% up here for the second, uh, for the second uh, target area up there. So you can see when you're looking at 10%, 16%, who cares about half a percent down here for an entry? And uh, anyway, that's just my feeling about it. Unless you're a day trader or scalper, you really, really do not have to be in a hurry. Um, let's see, I, I see another Coke question here. I'm going to skip a little bit. Uh, like to know on Coke, are you long a call, call option or a stock? Let me, let me make this very, very clear on this, okay? Folks, all I trade are uh, directional puts in calls. So I am long a call. I no longer trade stock. Um, I, I, I don't want to try to talk anybody into doing that, but is, I am convinced that that's where the real wealth is. And it's because you can leverage your money and it's because you can make two, three, four times your money in half the time or better. So in my opinion, um, trading the option is where true wealth is. It's not hard. You know, I, I never traded an option for 30 years in trading. I never traded an option uh, until very early January of 2018. Um, and from there, I'm, I'm, I, I just can't imagine trading a stock. So, um, so anyway, there you go. Did that help you there? Like to know. Let's see. I think Jason asked a question here. What's your strategy on bullish engulfing? Uh, wait for a pullback. Well, Jason, before we go look at Yeti, okay, let me share this with you on that. Let me answer that without even looking at a chart. Um, I, I can't answer that just a blanket answer. It's a good question, by the way. And I don't think you can answer that just, you know, just a blanket answer. I think you have to look at the chart and you have to decide based on what the chart is doing. Where is it sitting near support? Where is it sitting maybe near resistance? What does the chart pattern look like? Things like that. What are the candles surrounding it? So the previous candles, what do they look like? Then I think we can make that decision. But just to, to uh, a blanket answer, I just don't think we can do that. Uh, so now let's go look at Yeti and couple of things on Yeti that I see. By the way, that's a nice chart. And by the way, that's a buy right now in my opinion. So in this particular case, this is a bullish engulf and it's a buy. It's a buy because we're trending up and we've pulled back. Uh, so now that we have this can, can you guys see the chart? Let me make this a little bigger. There we go. Um, now that we have a bullish candle here on um, the hard right, 
let's draw a line from these lows here up to this low. Kind of close. <laughs> Come on, Rick. Really? What's going on here? I'm going to start this all over again. Never done this. This is my first time. So, because it's in a trend, I'm willing to buy this right now. Now, here's where I wouldn't buy this right now. And that is, if this bullish engulf looked like that, I would not bullet right, buy it right now. I would wait for a pullback. It's too far gone. But here, we're inside the trap. And this whole area right here for me is a buy area between the T-line and that uh, 3 EMA. And that's what I use the scanner for. I use that to get me into those areas um, to show me where the buys are. So does that make sense there? And, and again, it really depends on what you're looking at at the chart. But that's a pretty nice chart. Uh, we are kind of, we're kind of banging right into that resistance. But if you don't mind that, you're willing to trade the chart. The chart, uh, I think it's looking pretty good there. Uh, SQ. You're long on that? Um, if you're long, I would stay long. That's a great looking 3H trap right now. Yeah, I would absolutely stay long if you're long. Nice chart, like to know. And let me see here. Uh, I, I, I mostly use the uh, daily chart. Um, I like to use the three bar chart and I'll use the 15 minute of chart a lot when I'm looking at the market in general. Um, but when it comes to trading, I pretty much only use the daily chart. Daily chart. Uh, let's see. MJ can make good income on small positions. Um, I don't know whether you mean small positions on stock or small positions on options. So let me just kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, I've been trading for a living for quite some time now. And uh, my trading has always been on uh, lower price stocks, not $100 stocks, you know, $20 or lower. And I've only traded stocks up until a couple, three years ago now. Um, and I made very good, very good uh, income. What I discovered about the options was I didn't have to risk as much money. And that, well, that just kind of, kind of excites me right there. Kind of like that. Let's see, Lee's asking Yeti, what option would I buy? Well, let's take a look. Let me bring down my um, little thing here. Let's type in Yeti. So I've got Yeti up. The first thing I'm going to do is only buy a stock that's 50 days out or more. So first one I can see here is January. I mean, we, can, we have more, but let's start with January. So what I want to make sure of is there's plenty uh, open interest. And at the same time, I also want to look for Delta around 70. Seven, 72 is perfect. 1110 is perfect for me. Um, that would work good. So I would probably have to look at the 45 uh, January 45 strike. Uh, it looks like there is about 5% uh, spread between the bid and the ask. I always buy the uh, mid price. So what am I, 2.5% spread? I'm good with that. So anyway, that's what I would be looking at uh, on Eddie, Yeti, Yeti. FedEx, um, FedEx, FedEx hasn't come up on the scanner much today. It is in the trap area. Um, it, it's just consolidating right now. I do not believe it's a buy, nor do I believe it's a sell at this point. Um, it's just, you know, I guess if you're long, you can hold it. It really hasn't broken down. If you're looking to buy it, I don't think I'm, I'm not going to be a buyer here. 
And the reason that I wouldn't be a buyer is I don't see buyers stepping in. If anything, I see sellers stepping in. Um, let's take a look at UPS, if you're looking in that world. Now, earlier today, UPS was triggering a buy, but you can see it's pulled back a little bit. Uh, so um, this is where sometimes it's better to wait toward the end of the day uh, before you buy anything. So right now on that uh, FedEx, again, it's just, it, you know, it's, I, I, I just don't see it as a buy uh, right now. And don't see it as a sell either. Hello, Mike. Um, OSKT. Um, earnings on the 9th, November. Earnings on the, on the 9th. That's, uh, yeah, earnings is plenty far away, I think. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, the thing I would be, uh, the thing I would, whoops, that's not the chart. OSTK. There we go. Woo! Much better stock. Much better chart. In fact, I love that chart. So, so if earnings is on the 9th, I'm, I wouldn't care about that because I know how much money I need to make to make money. Um, now, some of you do the same thing, but I think most, most people, um, you know, you look up here for a target and here you're playing with 106.95. That's what I would look at for a target. So the thing of it is now you've got you've got earnings on the 9th. So what you've got to look at and I'm going to assume because you mentioned it you might not be too hip on holding through the earnings. Otherwise it wouldn't it would be a mute point. It would who cares? Don't even have to mention it. So I'm just guessing that that you know you're going to pay attention to that and I think that's a fair target level right there. So what you've, what you've got now is a race between price moving up and the ninth and getting up to that line. Well, here's the thing. I don't, I, don't, I don't trade with a target. I know how much money I need to make. And if, by the way, that is a gorgeous looking chart. Okay, I'm going to write that one down here. Um, if if uh, just moving up, say to right here, say 93.90. If I was to buy that, um, it would move up. This is 11% on the stock. That means it's going to be 20, 25% on the option. That will mean that I will make my goal two, maybe three to three and a half times. See, I know how much money I need to make. I could care less about targets. I could care less about tops. I could care less about, you know, hey, this thing's going to go back up here and test this high. I hope somebody does it, but I'm not. I would rather take a trade, let it swing, sell into strength, and then take my money and walk away. Come back and trade it when it pulls back in to my buy area. Uh, so... So anyway, that may, you know, maybe I'm right about your concern. I don't know. Um, but anyway, that's what I see on the stock. And I am going to write that one down. Thank you. O-S-T-K. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous looking uh, chart here set up in the trap. Nice little trend up. Looks really well. Thank you for that, by the way. What's my thoughts on GoGo? -Go? Okay, so... <clears throat> Um, until, until it makes a bullish move, I, I have zero thoughts on it. Okay. Other than it's moving sideways. Great. It's moving sideways, but to buy it right here, I don't think is a good idea. Uh, Ash. And let me, you know, by the way, you, you know, that, that doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what you think. Doesn't matter my plan. What matters is your plan. Um, I, I have just learned that trading should be easy and easy means comfortable to me. Um, you should be able to see the clear blue sky. You should be able to see the beautiful mountains out in the distance, the, the, the babbling brook, you know, fish jumping. You should be able to see that. 
Well, I look at this chart and I see yesterday's candle. All I see is rain. I, I don't see anything positive here other than it's moving sideways. It's the only thing that I see positive on this. It's moving sideways. Sorry to say that. Um, just, just remember, my thought does not matter to your trade. It's your plan to your trade. You have a reason. So, for instance, I have no idea. Maybe you bought it over here and you're actually good and green. I don't see there's so many things about this that I don't know that is just hidden that I just I, I just don't know some of this information. But if I'm looking to buy it, there's just no way. What I would rather, and this is this is when something like this happens, all of a sudden the sky becomes blue, the mountains become clear, the trees become visible, you can now see the fish jumping. Everything looks great, except, darn it, I didn't get that really cheap price. Well, I'm not sure that that matters. And, and this is probably one of the biggest aha moments of my trading, is it might not matter. So let's just take a look. If, the, if you think this stock can go to 1465 up here, and let's buy it on uh, a bullish candle. And we'll, we're going to stretch this out because you could buy it here on a bullish candle. But I'm going to stretch it out to up here. So if I paid 1150 for it, we're going to make 28.5%. Now, I don't know about you, but that's plenty good money for me. And you know what? When, I, when we get up here, I get to look over the top of everything and see the clear blue sky. I get to see the trees, the mountains, fish jumping, deer frolicking in the forest. Everything just looks so much clearer when you can see through candles like this. And the only way to see through candles like this is to be up a little bit higher. So there's my two cents on GoGo. -Go. Um, don't know what three bar chart is. Uh, well, it's a chart broken down to three bars, as simple as that. Uh, if you have TC2000, it's 130 minutes. Just go to a 130 minute chart here, and this is your three bar chart. So for example, here's today's first bar of this GoGo -Go right here. And this is today's second bar of GoGo of, uh, -Go today. So first bar, second bar. Let's take a look at yesterday. This is the first bar yesterday. This is the second bar yesterday. That's the third bar yesterday. Day before that, first bar, second bar, third bar. So it's just, it's just a chart broken down to three bars. And I, I think that is very useful when you get used to it. Uh, yes, Alex, this is uh, recorded, yeah. Lee, I'm not sure your platform's not your platform's not showing you 70. Uh, um, I think it was 72 delta. Lee, and let's see on Yeti. What was that? Let's see here. You're looking at uh, what did you say? Yeti uh, January 45s, January. 45. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what I that's what I looked at too. That 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 one right there. I think I said 72, but I guess it's 73. Yeah. Um BC, first of all, I don't recommend anything other than you brush your teeth and change your underwear once a day. Outside of that, I don't recommend anything in trading. I'm not a licensed, uh, uh, I'm not licensed to give recommendations, so I don't do that. Um, you, you know, there, there's always, and, and I know that some people here totally are going to disagree with this, and that's okay. Uh, that's the cool thing about trading is we get to, we get to um, create our own world trading. Um, 
For instance, my number one tool is the scanner. I don't, I don't know how anyone trades without something like this. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine it. And uh, people struggle, 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 and they're not getting any kind of alerts. So that, that just kills them. Um, they spend their time, you know, running around, look, just looking at charts. Let's take the Greeks, okay? I have no concern whatsoever about that. Um, I, let, let me share something here. Um, if I would have known that I would say this so many times since January 2018... Um, I would have started charging for it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but I, I mean, I think I would make a mint just giving this answer to every time I was asked, you know, this type of question. I only trade directional options to leverage my money. That's it. I always buy 50 days out, so I'm never hurt by... Uh, drawdown. Um, I always buy around a 70 delta and I always make sure there's plenty open interest. That's it. So when it comes to all the Greeks, the only thing I know, I, I like Greek salad, okay? Um, there, there's, I, I don't pay attention to any of that. Now I know some people think, well, my God, I've got to do that. Well, okay, if your trading system says you've got to do that, then do that. My trading says that when I look at a chart, I've got to be able to read a chart. I've got to be able to look at this chart and say, I see this chart going higher, and that's what I'm trading. Now what I'm going to do, instead of spending my hard-earned money on one position, because it will cost a lot more money to buy this with stock, I'm going to go over here to the options and I'm going to leverage my money and spend far less money buying into this and make far more money when it moves up. True. If it does not move up and it moves down, you can lose more money. This is why the focus is not on the options. The focus is on the chart. You've got to be able to read and uh, I'm going to use this word. I hate this word, but it's a fact. You've got to be able to predict what this chart is going to do. And you do that by using chart patterns, support, resistance, candlesticks, price action, things like that. So anyway, did that help BC? I hope, I hope. Uh, let's see, Lee's going in. What, what, you're going in, you're buying uh, Yeti, is that right, Lee? And let's see, I think we already looked at FedEx. Yeah, I think we already looked at that. Oh, um, Richard's asking, what's the difference... Um, good question. I, I'm, by the way, I've been working on this, and I love this. Uh, I don't know that I've perfected it yet, but I love it. Um, so Richard's asking, what is the difference between the 3 H trap, uh, the, the hashtag number one uh, scan, and the crossing, then trapping? Well, let's, uh, well, let's take a look at CZR here. So... What, CZ, what, what I'm looking for, this is probably a poor, we'll look at another one too. What I'm looking for, and I think I've got this set up for looking back 15 days, all right? And I want a chart where price has been under the T-line. Now, the, for, let me back up for a second. For those that don't know, the 3 8 trap is the T-line, that's the black line, and the 3 EMA, that's this green line. And we're looking for, for a price that's trapped or in the middle of those two moving averages between them. Just like CZ, CZR is right now. So what I'm looking for is in the past 15 days, which I think that's kind of long, so I'm going to be shortening that up. Uh, we're looking for a chart that it's underneath 
that rallies up and then pulls back. And it did that. And if you look at it, it's within 15 days. So did we, are we not between um, the, or below the T-line here? And now we're back up. The one thing it doesn't have is that rally up. So like I said, I've not perfected this yet, uh, but I do really, really like it. Let's look at AVY. Much better here. Much better. This is the type of trade I'm looking for. See how we've been below the T-line? Now, um, it doesn't have to be a close. So basically, it's just a low. So it could be an open and then close back up. Again, this is set to 15 days. So within 15 days, it has to be low. It has to rally up and then come back into the trap. So it's it's the same thing as a trap setup, except this one, I'm specifically asking it to be below rather than just humming along maybe above the T-line, pop up and pull back. Um, let's see here. Is, is UNH one? Yeah, see UNH. See how we're below, and this would have alerted many, many, many times in here. Uh, well, for me, it alerts when it makes a new day high. So it actually would have alerted here when it made a new day high, new day high, new day high, new day high. Anytime it makes a new day high is when I have it set up for an alert. Uh, Alex is asking on FedEx, uh, that is an inside day, yes. Yep. Using this candle as an inside day. Now, Alex, I kind of know what you're referring to, I think. You, you've probably heard me talk about that. Uh, let me clarify something here, though. When I'm looking at something and I say it, it's an inside day, two-day high, this candle here, I want it green. I don't want it, in my case, black or red. I want it green. Then, if it wants to pull back, we can have all those in inside day. I'm looking at this, and I don't treat this the same as a bullish inside day, because this is not a bullish candle. So I just I just want to make that a little bit clear there. Uh, okay, Mel, I'll go for this. So you, yeah, you didn't put the ticker symbol, so I'm kind of lost, but I'll I'm, I'll go with you on that. Yeah. Uh, all these, yeah, I, you, you guys, when you, when you just post, post ticker symbols out, uh, I'm going to take that as you're just sharing with everybody. Okay. Um, all right. I, I'm, I'm not a dog. Don't, don't just throw me a bone, you know, give me some direction, please. Uh, just don't post ticker symbols by themselves. Uh, like I say, I'm not, I'm not a dog. Uh, Lester, you did a fib projection. Would you mind going over how uh, you did that? Um, all right, let's let's take uh, let's go to a naked chart here. Get rid of everything. So I think I can't remember what I did yesterday. Uh, maybe it was this right here. So what I'm going to do is you, you see where we've got a low to a high to a higher low to a higher high. It's all working. So I'm going to take this low and go to this high, and then just simply come to this low, and then that gives you some fib projections there. So I'm, I, I, I want to look for a low, a high, and a higher low, and then use fib projections to come up with um, ideas for possible targets area up there. I think that's what, you're, what you were uh, talking about, Jason, maybe. Where is the arrow? I've got no idea what you're talking about, money. No clue. Uh, let's see me. Uh, Emily, do you have an after hours market on your chart? No, I do not. Uh, I, 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 for years now, I, when I first started, I thought it was important to look at after-hours stuff, Emily. But, um, you know, after putting in a full day, 
trading I really have no interest in after hours so when when I markets close I get up and walk away uh, I'm done for a while so I, I don't do anything after hours and I don't have anything here now the one thing I will do is uh, on one of my monitors I have uh, the spy and VXX which I need to go look at that anyway um, I have that up and I have them set to the 15 minute chart and uh, they are they will work after hours because I have the after hours turned on just so I can monitor it and more than anything it's for the pre-market like I say when I'm when the market closes I'm pretty much done for the day I'm cooked um, so that's the only thing I look at um, say after the market closes but again I, I tend to look at it more pre-market but outside of that, I don't look at anything after hours. <laughs> it don't change them then, Chuck. <laughs> Lee doesn't want to pay. Yeah, you know, and Lee, I'm not, I'm not suggesting you shouldn't. I think every person should learn as much as they could learn. Um, I. Over the years, I've learned how to read a chart, and I'm taking advantage of that is what I'm doing. And the advantage I'm taking is, well, I'm using that, and then I've just discovered, you know, I'm, I'm not the brightest apple on the tree, and it took years to discover it, and it was with the help of, of my good friend, uh, Doug Campbell, that if I was to trade options, and keep it simple, it would just improve the profitability. And, and that's what's happened. So uh, at this point, I'm not going to run out and learn about everything. I This is where I study. I study the chart. I, I don't study options. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time studying options. I'm going to pin, but I will have it, however, spend a crazy amount of time studying charts because this is where the trick is the trick is not the options the trick is the chart and once you learn this trick the other one is simple um, very very simple the way I do it anyway so I'm not saying you shouldn't I'm just saying that this is the way I do it that's all uh, BC, uh, 20 times what you're going to typically trade, 20 times would be a good number for the, for open interest. Let's see, uh, what criteria use to close a position in, if in case it goes the opposite, uh, due to market conditions, some bad stocks? Well, that's an easy, easy, easy question. Let's find something to buy here. So... I want to point this out. I, here's how I got this, okay? I mean, without the scanner, I would have to pop through how many charts to five, find something. And here I'm able to find something just because of the scanner. So I'm going to move this over here. Uh, here's another one, too, I like. So let me, let me make sure. I like Marvel. Hmm. Let's, let's bring this back over here. Hmm. Let's take a look at this. So Marvel, let's take a look at GPC. I'll pass on that one. Let's, no, let's uh, DFS. Marvel. Man, I wish that wasn't a bullish engulf in there. A bearish, excuse me. I really wish it wasn't. But you know what? I'm, I, here's what let's, let's do. Um, so what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Stop if it goes the wrong way. So what I'm going to do is if I set up a plan on this, here's how I'm going to set my plan up. I'm going to ask myself, well, why do I like this chart? And I like this chart because it's trending. Okay, that's a great answer. Anybody can certainly answer that. But let's, let's how did we get into that trend? And you see here, consolidation, we broke out just a doji here. Here's some consolidation. See how we broke out. See how we came back and tested. See how we came back and tested. So I'm kind of thinking right here might be kind of important. Right in there, right? 
So, um, I'm also, I'm going to run over and take a look at the spy real quick. Because I also think we are insanely overbought. And I think we're just, we're crazy stretched out. Um, I'm also going to look at FNGU, which seems to be doing okay. Um, again, crazy overbought and crazy stretched out. Uh, so let's go back to Marvel now. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. MRVL. There we go. So let's go back to Marvel. So the reason I wanted to look at the market is, well, how tight do I want to get my stop? And I think I want to be pretty tight. I'm going to move this out of the way. So if I was to buy this right now, I'm probably looking at a 2.25% stop. So, Shay, the first thing you want to do is start a plan. I want you to put a hard stop in, okay? If you have to ask that question, you need to put a hard stop in. In other words, put your line up there, put your stop in. Right after you buy it, or at the same time, put your stop in. Now, let's, let's continue with this plan. What can this chart do for us? I'm going to go over and look at the weekly chart, a, maybe the monthly chart. I just want to make sure there's no surprises over here running into any kind of resistance. Hey, we're up here in new, new territory. We're pretty good, right? So here we've broken out, we've tested, and now we're trying to hammer right here. So I'm kind of liking that. Now, as far as a target, you know, if, if everybody wants some, some kind of a target, I'm going to come right over here and let's just go right there. Is that good enough for you? How did I arrive at that? That's just 10% higher than where I am. That's it. First of all, if we're looking at blue sky up here, the target, um, the, the target can be wherever you want to put it. Now, if you want to do fib lines and, you know, that kind of magic and all that stuff, by all means, you can certainly do that. I don't do that. I'm going to trade for my, my goal anyway. I know how much money I need to make to double my account. I know this. So that's all I need. And this is more than ample. So I'm going to look at this. Let's come over here now and find the trade. So let's come over here and look at M Marvel, M R V L. Notice that I'm not in a hurry to get in. I'm really not. You, you don't have to be. Uh, earnings are not till December. That's kind of cool. So there's January, almost 100 days out. Whoa. Open interest, 6543. That's a lot. 71 delta. That's good. Uh, we're looking at uh, 1.55 spread between the bid and the ask, so I'm half that. Uh, I'm kind of thinking that that might be kind of a worthy trade. So I'm willing to give this a little bit of a chance right here. So what I'm going to do is I don't think I'm going to buy it right now. I think I'm going to wait to the end of the day and let's see how the end of the day goes. Again, I don't have to be in a hurry. Okay. And I, uh, and, and to Shay, to your question there, very important. You set a hard stop and set your plan in place. So there's your trade right there. You, your trade is you are willing to buy this. Well, let me, let me change this up. I, I'm willing to buy this in this area with a, what is that, about a 2% stop and a possible nine, over 9.5% nine target. That's my trade. My trade is not to go higher. My trade is not to go lower. My trade is to cut it off if it's going to go against me. And my trade is to make money on the way up to 48.50. That's my trade. So your plan is set. So place, you know, I would place my trade and everything's done. I no longer have to worry about it. Does that make sense? Uh, Jan, I'm not sure what you mean when you say below three period or eight period. Un Wait a minute, maybe I do. Uh, that crossing then trapping, 
it's below the eight and crossing up is what it is. It's a rest day, money. The inside day is a rest day. So you would have uh, some uh, for the recorder. Money, money's asking, what's the significance of an inside day? So let's say you have a trend. We're trending up, and let's 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 give it a couple of red bars here. So now you're looking for a breakout, right? So let's a little red bar, and then we break out. Now, if we put in a rest day, that becomes a buy area, and there's your breakout. So you, you, significance is just a rest day is what it is. Lee, I have no idea what you mean. I won't anymore. I have no idea what that means. no idea what bone means either. Um, you missed the 3H trap explanation. Is that the 3 EMA? Uh, they're both the 3 EMA. I'm sorry, they're both the E, e <laughs> they're both the EMA. My 3 is the high, is the a lot of people use the close. And you know, I, I wouldn't chase, you know, I would figure out yourself what you like. Uh, I really would. I use the high. Some people use as the close of the three, but I would certainly figure out yourself. Uh, let's see. C, I thought this chart was the best chart ever. Yeah, it did look good yesterday. Yes, sir. Um, was there was there something I missed? Yeah, the earnings. Yeah, uh, uh, City had earnings, I believe, today. Yes, sir. Man, I, I, I. T take this to the bank. Every trader should have access to earnings date. Uh, there are several ways you can do it. You've got to figure out what works best for you. Um, and um, a trader that does not pay attention to earnings uh, is a trader that buys lottery tickets at a gas station and hopes you win. Um, and that's your retirement. Sorry to be so hardcore, so hardcore on that SP, but earnings are something that is so so important to pay attention to. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, all you need to know about er you need to know about earnings is don't trade through earnings. So, although City looked great yesterday, it it had earnings today. That is enough reason not to touch it. I don't care how good it looks. Earnings is a horrible thing to trade through. Horrible thing. Um, thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. Uh, like to know, average, you know, average, I have no idea. Um, sometimes, sometimes five. You know, I might enter... I might have 10 positions on and go all week and never close one. And then next week, I might close all those 10 and we'll have added 10 more. So, um, you know, it, it, it's really hard to say what the average is. I mean, because it's so, there, there's nothing, it follows the market. What is the market doing? What is, what is, um, what profits do I have? Things like that. Or losses in, in case of having to take a loss. Uh, I'm long NIO. NIO. And I said, Mike, would you keep NIO on a monitor watch list? Seems to be consolidating and holding the 21. Absolutely, yes. Uh, am I, am, let's go to a naked chart here. And that to me is a great looking chart pattern. 
Okay. Um, here we're up and all we're doing is consolidating. And I think it's a great chart pattern. Now I am currently long this and I will hold it unless it breaks my stop. And right now my stops are on that $20.34 level. And I'm looking for about $26.70 up here. So I would absolutely keep it on a watch list. So to give you some idea, what I do is this is my my hot list. The hot list are stocks that I put out, uh, say, on the weekends and every day. And um, um, every morning. For those that don't know, you can pick those up on YouTube um, and... Uh, what I do is I take those stocks and I put them on my watch list. And I have a watch list that only brings up stocks that's in the trap. And then I've got, it's the same watch list that are just making new day highs and new day lows. Um, I've got a couple others that maybe, you know, like a two bar low reversing or things like that. But that's fancy business. You don't need that. Um, this is all I need to watch for charts on that watch list. So you can bet NIO is on there. And when I see NIO starting to uh, make its way up a little bit, I'm very likely to add to it. Very likely to add to it. <clears throat> Let's put this back over here. Uh, grub. Oh, I wanted to mention too, I, I think most of you know about the YouTube, uh, but those that don't know... Um, I've been posting on Twitter lately uh, a lot of stuff during the day. So YouTube, you can do nothing about YouTube during the day. It's too much work to create a YouTube, so you can't, you can't just post something in YouTube. Uh, but every morning we post the YouTube trade ideas. And on Twitter, um, I post a lot of stuff during the day because that's so fast. I mean, it's just type and click and you're done. Uh, so if anyone is interested, go check out my Twitter channel. Uh, I think it, you can try candlestick trading at Rick Sadler forward slash YouTube, or you can just try Rick Sadler you, or, or, or Twitter, not YouTube. Uh, you can just try Rick Sadler at Twitter, and you might find it there too. So uh, let's see, is Grub Uh, around the bottom, I couldn't tell you if it's around the bottom money. I I, I, I can't do that. Uh, it is testing a resistance, but walking above the T line in an uptrend. Would it be a buy now or wait till it breaks resistance? Okay, so let's put this chart up here. Um, beautiful three eighths trap, by the way. Absolutely beautiful. It is bumping its head against resistance. I don't usually pay attention to that stuff. This is what I'm trading right here. Now, the one difference that I'm going to do is I'm not going to trade a uh, bearish candle. I'm going to trade a bullish candle and only a bullish candle. Pretty rare for me to buy a bearish candle. The one exception is if I'm in the position and it pulls back, I might add to it. But to buy a new position, I wait till I see the bulls. So I'm going to wait... And by the way, that's a good looking chart. I'm going to wait till I see bulls stepping in. That's what I want to see here. Wouldn't that make a nice Fig Newton uh, chart pattern? Man, that would be cool. So that's what I'm going to wait for, okay? Outside of that, I think that's a terrific looking chart. Uh, again, I would just wait. Now, let, let's, that's just me. We've got resistance here and it broke out. If you feel like this is the place to buy, rock and roll. My way is not the best way. Maybe that's the place to buy. And maybe by the end of the day, this thing starts jamming up. Who knows? Um, maybe this is the place to buy and tomorrow it does something like this. That I can't predict. But what I can say with a fair amount of confidence, with a high, a high probability, because that's what works this is what works, I find, the most, is take a chart that looks like this, which is terrific. I'm going to put it on my scanner here, and when my scanner starts showing me it's making a new day high tomorrow, it's unlikely it's going to happen today. But tomorrow, 
that's when I'm going to get interested. Or maybe the next day I get interested in it. So anyway, nice chart, great bottom. Right now, it's just a matter of deciding where you want to enter the trade. And if this is where you enter, I understand that. How about cues? Hey, we're going to have to wrap this up pretty quick. I just realized what time it was. Uh, how about the cues? Do you see any kind of significance of a pullback other than it's, other than it's horribly overbought? Um, I think there's a high probability of a pullback. I also think there's a probability that continues higher. You know, I, the chart's been up one, two, three, four days. Five days if you count the fact we're over yesterday's body. We've got a gap in here, a gap in here, a gap in here. It is crazy overbought. Now, that doesn't mean anything. doesn't mean that it's going to pull back. But what it tells me is to lighten up on my trading there, Rick. Take her easy. You don't have to trade every day, Rick. Rick, sit back. Go drink a Coke. Go have an ice cream. You don't have to trade every day day. So what I'm trying to point out, Mel, is let let if if you disagree with the market being overbought, that would be another story. Okay. You may say, hey, this is the perfect trend. This is an overbought. You, you know, you may say, well Rick, you really don't know what overbought is. And I'll just say, okay. So but I look at this and man, I've got a, a pretty hardcore rule. Don't be buying charts that are up one, two, three, four, five. By the way, I count gaps as a day, six, seven, eight days in a row. This is the way I see it. So I'm thinking we need to consolidate or pull back, which is the same thing. Consolidate might be more of a, let's just move sideways, where a pullback might be more of a, let's pull back and retest in here, okay? So I'm very concerned where we are right now. Very, very concerned. That's why I'm going to be uh, closing things down and going to cash or very, very near cash this weekend. And the closer we get to the election, I think the more concern uh, that we need to be. Let's see, Emily, you've been, you know, I've peeked at UA myself. Great looking chart. I think this is a buy right now, actually. Yep. I think that's a buy. Yep. Let's see. Would you wait for an inside day? Not necessarily. No. Like I say, I think that's a buy now. You know, the trader's choice. Do you want to buy this now or do you want to wait for an inside day? Bottom line, this is going to be the buy box. I think the thing I want to ask you is how comfortable do you feel about the market? I think that's the biggest question that we need to ask ourselves at the moment. How do you feel about the market? Let's see. Stop loss 1066. Wow, that's way down there. Mercy. It's right in here. So you're thinking... Um, move this out of the way. So you're thinking you're willing to risk 5% on this chart? I'll just leave that question at that. Uh, and then you're, you're, you're having a hard time figuring out a target. Let me share something with you. Um, the targets are the easiest thing in the world that let's, Let's solve this problem right now, okay? The easiest thing in the world. Let's take a look at a daily chart. Now, we can shrink it up this small, but it's very hard to see over here. Uh, let's go to a weekly chart. My only purpose for doing this is so I can see over here. And heck, we can go to a three-day chart. You can see it over here. All right, that's my only purpose for doing that. So here's, here's how you set up targets. You want to look for price action that has had a battle. Now, let me show you a battle. 
See where you have a down candle and indecision and then a down candle? That's a battleground. So how about 1240? Let's come over here and this might be a battle right here. This right here is definitely a battle. That's a good one right there. So how's that for targets? I truly, 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 finding targets is the easiest thing in the world. This is all you have to do. Go to a little longer term if you can't see the whole chart on your, on your screen. Try a two-day chart, try a three-day chart, four-day chart, five-day chart. I like to use a two, three because it gives me a little more, uh, you can see a little bit more of the battleground. If you go to a weekly chart, sometimes it's kind of hard to see some of the battleground. Like this one is clear, this one is clear, this one is not so clear. But on that three-day chart, you can see all three of them. But setting up a, 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 a target is absolutely the most easiest thing in the world. Okay, Emily? Give that a chance right there. And go practice. Go pick out a couple of charts and just do that. Uh, Lee's asking how you set a stop for an option. Uh, okay, that is a problem, Lee. That really is. And I want to share this again. The only thing I do with options is use it to leverage my money. My stops, everything is on the chart. Everything is on the chart. So take this UA. Now, for me, I'm going to look at this and my stop is going to be closer to 1085. So that's my stop. Has nothing to do with the option. This is my stop. So if the price breaches this and I don't usually stop out on a breach it has to close so a close below that should stop me out and I again I use everything from the chart not the option uh, right Shay yeah options just you, you have to you know I, I've heard of people um, I've heard of people that uh, can't trade stock, um, actually several people <laughs> I know of, that they can't trade a chart. They couldn't trade a chart if they saved their soul. So what did they do? They went to an, some option class somewhere that said that option were the savior and options are going to save you. Um, they trade options and what they discovered is instead of losing $10 a day, they lost $100 a day. Uh, that was the only thing they discovered. So it really does boil down to what you can do with the chart. What you can do with an option doesn't really mean anything. It's what you can do with the chart. You've got to be able to, again, I'm going to use that word predict, and that's a horrible, horrible word to use. But the reality is that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, Shay there is predicting that UA is going up. Why? Well, let's, and I'm going to predict that as well. Why? Well, because UA has been trending. Because UA has resistance right here, and it broke out. UA has broken out, and it has tested, tested, and tested, and it looks like the bulls are coming in because this is a bullish candle. So I'm going to predict this trend will go higher. And all I needed to do is to go higher to meet my goal, which would be maybe 1175 tops. So that's what I'm predicting here. And, and it's horrible to, to predict in trading. But the reality is that's what we do. We just, we don't predict that um, we don't predict on bars like this, well, this, I'm, I predict this is going to be higher. Well, maybe you're right, but you may grow old before that happens in some cases. Uh, Siku, yes, you can place a buy order and a stop order at the same time. You should be able to. I don't know what program you use, but you should be able to. 
Uh, Kenny Rick, if the stock is at fifty dollars and you buy the option for nine dollars, where would where should I set? The, I just answered that, Kenny. I just answered that. I use the chart. So here's the reality, folks. Using the chart, you could be down twenty percent on the stock before you know it. That's the reality. But I'm still going to use the chart. Uh, let's see. I was burned on earnings once. Once. Oh yeah, earnings will kill you. Earnings are horrible. Yeah. Hey, hey, Ed. Uh, Malcolm saying he closed out his BAC for a profit yesterday just because C had earnings. You know that makes sense. And I, I, I have to admit I'm long uh, Wells Fargo, and I'm thinking about closing that out uh, and not living through earnings tomorrow. And at one point this week, even yesterday, maybe even this morning, I thought about holding it. But I may have to rethink that idea. Uh, T-line below trend indicator 2. Was that a warning sign? Uh, yeah, because really what that would be is uh, a trend to the downside. Anytime you have a fast-moving average leading a slow-moving average or slower, that's a downtrend, like right here. See, there's the trend indicator. Here's the T-line. You, you, anytime, anytime a fast-moving average is leading a slower-moving average, that's the direction it's going. So that would be a trend down. This would be a trend up. Um, let's see, money for earnings. Uh, a lot of people suggest closing right before the earnings. Your thoughts? I agree not to buy before earnings. Um, you know, let me, let's do it this way. Um, there are, how many stocks out there can we possibly trade? Five, six thousand, seven thousand, ten thousand. I'm pretty sure we can buy something that is nowhere near earnings. I'm pretty sure that if this week, if everything had earnings, I'm pretty sure it would be okay if you just said to hell with trading, let's just not mess with earnings. I guess what I'm saying, money, is you seem to be focusing on earnings an awful lot. Just stay away from them. You know, if you want to, if you're in a stock and you want to. You want to get that close to a hot fire? That's okay. I don't want to be within a hot fire a week away from it. You know, it, it, it's kind of like, <laughs> it's like playing Russian roulette. Are you seriously going to play the game? You know, don't play the game. Earnings will bury you if you're not careful. And... um does anyone think earnings right now, unless you unless you are one of these big tech giants that are making money because you're staying home, do you think anybody's going to have good earnings? I don't think so. Unless they cook the books. So I just stay clean away from earnings. I, I mean, that's my thought, by the way. <laughs> that's my thought. Uh, let's see here, Fig Newton. Hmm, good. Yes, they are here. Here I've. Um, let, let, th this is my Fig Newton alert, by the way. And Fig Newton, I love to trade this chart pattern. Now, the only thing I don't like is I don't like because it's too high. But let's think about this. All you have to do is put your stop right here. What? Who says this chart can't go higher? It can. It absolutely can. I love the Fig Newton setup. This is a great chart setup. And at, at one point today, it was, that's why it triggered a Fig Newton. A bullish candle, not so bullish, and a bullish candle. When this was at a new day high, that was a bullish candle. I still like that chart. That's a beautiful chart. Um, let's look at ADSK. Uh, this, this is, it. sometimes things get through 
we can't be too tight on things. I wouldn't call this a Fig Newton, but it comes up because it's a bullish chart, not so bullish, bullish chart. Uh, let's look at uh, Etsy. Etsy, a uh, Fig Newton or a Doji continuation pattern. So how would I trade this? Well, there you go. Why do we like this chart? We like this chart because it's trending. It broke out and rested. It came back and tested that rest. And now it's moving up. So where would you not like it? If it went below the rest right here. So right now, if I was to buy it at this moment, which I'm not, you're looking at a 4% risk on it. Me, I would probably say I would look at this on an inside day. My stop is going to stay the same, but my risk becomes lower. Let's see, with your stops on the price of the stock, do you pay attention to the option performance or only to the price of the action of the stock? I pay attention to only the action, the price action of the stock. Now, Dan and everyone, please remember, you've got to be good at reading charts. Okay, you have got to be reading charts. All right, let's call it a day here. Um, this was recorded. I'll get this uh, sent out on the recording. And I'll, I'll uh, notify you, send you an email, let you know the recording is ready if you want to pick it up or for anyone that couldn't make it. Hey, and seriously, I think Ed put out my Twitter thing if anyone is in interested, and I do post charts out there during the day, or not necessarily charts, but text. Uh, you can take a look at that and... Uh, Sometimes there's some pretty nice charts, some little explanations, and anyway, you might like it. So, uh, let's see. Last one, GRWG. You like that longer term? Um, that could be. I don't. Uh, I don't do too much longer term here. I've got a longer term account, but I don't do too much here. Longer term. Um, it could certainly go higher. I mean, there's no question about that. Absolutely. So I'm going to have to just agree with you, if that's all right. Well, let's leave it at that. Nice trend. Good looking chart. Short term trade to me. Looks great. All right. You guys all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I hope you uh, have a great day trading. Uh, TLRY, by the way, uh, is one I would keep an eye on. That was on today's trade list. Uh, I'll be sending that out on Twitter here shortly. So, all right. You guys take care and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you.